Welcome to my Christmas decorating series. This is episode number four. We're going to go shopping for Christmas trees, real ones, so I'll show you how I look after those. We'll do some big mantle styling, big coffee table styling as well, and lots of things that you can use in your own living room. Very little money spent, if anything at all. We're going to be reusing what I already have, revamping where we need to and shopping from my favourite place, Mother Nature. Now I've only ever had real Christmas trees. I normally buy from local plantations but the last few years I've loved this garden centre. The quality is so good. I've gone for a very generous nine foot and a very generous seven foot. Maybe a little bit too generous because I'm just about getting them into the car. The thing I love about this garden centre as well is the netting they use is made of cotton, not plastic. Over the years, I've found it easier to prep the trees from the back of my Land Rover. So I take the netting off and then cut off a sizable chunk of the bottom. The reason I'm taking so much off the big tree there is that it's a very strange shape. So I need it to go into the container. But before I do that, I'm actually going to drill holes in it. This aids the water absorption. These are big trees and they need a lot of water. So I'm making some decent sized holes in them. I also offer up the plant stands at this stage, the tree holders, just to make sure everything is fitting. And there we go in the house, nice and straight, in the corner. Have to check from every angle as well because it will drive me insane if it's on the wonk. The first week in the house, the tree is going to need lots of water. Fortunately, the stand I've got has got a little red indicator on it. So when that drops down, I know that more water is needed. I have an old wire tree topper that I've used for years and years and it keeps getting sprayed different colours to coordinate with different schemes. Now, controversially, I like to put my tree topper on first before I do any lights, any decorations. This year I'm using lots of copper cluster lights, so I thought I'd try some on the tree. Now I've got about 1500 here, and as I'm putting them on, I just think there's no way is there enough lights here. So the good old roll of 2000 is coming out. And the way I like to put them on is from the tip along the branch into the middle of the tree and then back up. I loop around the end and then repeat the process. I find that this gives much more of a twinkly effect and you don't get that lassoing or the lines up and down. And as for the designer's rule of 100 lights per foot of tree, well, I never was very good at rules. I've got a seven foot tree and I've got 2000 lights. Now, I never waste money on tree skirts and this year to cover up the stand, I'm using offcuts of Hessian. Now, I haven't made life easy for myself because I want the tree to cascade down so I've not cut off the lower branches. And that's it for the tree in this room. It's a naked tree and I'm doing nothing else to it. I often get asked about the fans on top of the wood burner. The reason they're there is that the heat gets trapped in the ingle nook. So the fans blow the heat out into the room. I got them off Amazon, so I'll drop a link in the description below. Now you may have noticed a magazine on the coffee table. This is this month's edition of 25 Beautiful Homes. And do you recognize who house of the month is number one? Yes, it's me. And even the editor has mentioned me. This was shot the about this time last year, actually. It was the end of November. And it was a lovely shoot. And it's a magazine that I've wanted to appear in for so many years. We've had lots of other features, but this was my tick box, my bucket list publication to be in. So happy days. Back to the decorating. Now we're going to move on to the great big mirror. I normally put these lights over it, but they're silver. I've had them for years when I was in my silver phase. I'm thinking now I want to change the colour. I've tried to take them off, but they really are fixed quite tightly. So I'm going to get the rub and buff out and then just apply that with my fingers. I've tried cloths and brushes, but I think just using your fingers is the easiest way. It's a very small, subtle change but I think that's what good design is about. It's the attention to detail. 
So I'm happy with how they have turned out. I've left them overnight just to dry off. Rub and buff dries very quickly, but I just want to make sure that it's properly dry because it is going onto a white mirror. This mirror actually used to be silver and it's one of a pair. Its twin is in the kitchen. Now I've just come from the kitchen because that's where I've been hanging the cluster of acorns, pine cones that I did in my first Christmas video. And I've decided they're going to look better in this room in the snug. Now onto the mantle. Bertie, my furry supervisor, is in position so we can begin. This oak beam was already here when we first moved in, but it was covered in orange varnish. So I got my shop blasters to blow it over and then I finished it with white wax. Now I'm going to start by taking everything off, but I'm definitely reusing these flameless candles. They've just been amazing. I'll link them in the description box below. I've always been a real candle person, but I tell you, I'm a total convert now. This is the same garland that I used as a base on the stair case. I think I used about eight of them there. But this is going to be a base. Now I'm not going to use any fixings whatsoever. I'm taking this very heavy candlestick that was already on there. It's actually brass and it's had a paint effect on it when I wasn't into my brass. But now I am into my brass. In fact, the brass candles that I found at Malvern Flea Market, if you saw that video, are going to come out and be used on the mantle. I got these for such a great price. So six really good quality heavy brass candlesticks for £30. So I'm just evenly spacing them along the mantle, but I want them quite to the front because I don't want the greenery that I'm going to select to drown them. So I'm going to go with three different pines on here. We've got this wonderful one that I don't know the name of. I'd love to find out what it's called. It produces these wonderful cigar-like acorns. And then also my ultimate favourite, which is Lelandi. All these pines will hold water for so long and so they will dry back really lovely, slowly on the mantle. I like to start with my ends. So I'm not trying to create a complete mirror image. After all, you are dealing with nature, so it's not going to be identical. But it's just about creating the balance. So I'm not putting anything particularly heavy on there. I've got the loppers, the wheelbarrow in, and I'm just snipping off little bits and then working it in behind the heavy candlesticks, behind the mirror, into the original garland that went on there. Now we are using gold twigs in the decoration. You need to catch up on my other videos if this is the first one that you've seen and then you'll see the theme. So the gold twigs have gone in. I'm adding pine cones and we're running with the brown pampas grass this year. This is my little accent that's running through all of the decorations. And if you fancy giving this a go, just be warned. It does make a bit of a mess. You might want to cover your floors first. We've got a big six foot coffee table that actually used to be a dining room table many years ago. Now this is going to get messy so the sheepskins are coming out of the way and yes there is a costume change because all this was filmed over several days. Now what I'm about to do is going to be quite big but you can do this on a much smaller scale. I actually found this tray in the stream after a storm. I thought it was metal so I climbed down into the water. It turns out it's plastic. So I thought how useful. I've got some biodegradable florist foam and I'm also going to bring in an old candlestick that has been so many colours over the years and I've just recently finished it with some rub and buff. The brass 
gold theme is continuing. I've also been out and collected some more greenery. It's wonderful having this field. I'm also going to be using some Gorilla Tape, some scissors and the glue gun has come out. Now, although this container is not precious, I may well want to use it again. In fact, I know I'll want to use it again because it's such a useful size and shape for me. So what I'm going to do is run three lengths of the Gorilla Tape all the way along, making sure that it's wider than the foam blocks because I'm then going to stick with the hot glue, the foam blocks onto the tape. After Christmas, when I take all this apart, it means I can just pull the tape off and the container is absolutely fine. The blocks will also be fine as well because they will just have the tape stuck to them on one side so they should be reusable again. I'm adding a bit of glue to the base of the candlestick just to keep it in position. Again it's not going to get damaged because you can easily pick the glue off. And then I'm going to water the blocks. So my word, do they take up a huge amount of water. But because this tray is plastic and it's raised all the way around, I can really keep these nice and moist. Now I'm just working my way through. Again, I'm going to start with the ends, cutting down little bunches, little stems and poking them in. They go in so easily and I've got to tell you, it's such a pleasure. It's so therapeutic doing this. I absolutely love it. It makes me smile. I'm using the candlestick as my center point and then I keep my greenery going in the same direction on either side of the candlestick. So everything to the left will go off pointing left, everything to the right will go off pointing right. Once I get all that greenery on there, then I can add the embellishments. You can cover up the base if you wish to, but I quite like little bits of that tray showing through. Once I've got all that together, then I will put in the candles and I'll use some museum wax, just a little ball of it stuck to the bottom to keep the candles straight. Again, it did make a big mess, but it was easy to clean up and so the sheepskin rugs can now go back under the coffee table. Now we're going to move on to the side table where I'm just going to use a few pieces. Now, if you saw my Malvern flea market video, you will recognize this beautiful bowl. So that one is gonna have some of the big baubles in and some little bits off a wreath that I picked apart quite a while ago. I've used some of it in the hallway as well. I'm adding some bells and my lovely brown velvet ribbon plus a few coasters that I picked up in Texas with the star on. Over to this side of the room. Because we've got some big statement pieces in here, I'm going to keep this quite simple. So again, the brown velvet ribbon, which is a theme that is running through Christmas. I've just tied onto a couple of the lamps and then I've brought out the copper cluster fairy lights. I want to use twigs here, so I'm going to cut some of the old apple tree. It's covered in light and we have such wonderful clean air here. And I'm going to bring some of those inside, put them into the big jug and add a few more pieces that I already have or will be using to keep the scheme cohesive. I've had messages from people saying, you know, it's all very well, Trace, you've got all this time to spend decorating. I'm really time poor. Well, doing something like this is, it takes no time at all. You can just pick up a few twigs, add a few embellishments, put some acorns around, some velvet ribbons, some fairy lights, candles, and you can create a beautiful atmosphere. 
I'm bringing my giant candlesticks in off the veranda. These were originally pink and I used them in my spring decorating. Then they went out onto the veranda and I put some dark wax on them. And I thought actually that lovely pop of brown would work beautifully in the window just with a glass candle on the top. So I would always recommend that you look around your home, see what you can use in different places and can you change the colour? Can you make it work in that new scheme? And that way you can save yourself so much money and have a lot of fun in the process. Just a few more finishing touches in here before I move on to the next decorating episode. That's going to be number five and it's going to be the kitchen. The big tree you saw earlier is going to turn up there and it's going to be fully decorated. I really hope you can join me next week. Take care. Thank you for watching. <laughs>